Definitely in the first stage. So I want him admitted to the East Ward immediately. Rick Gale, I'd like you both to supervise all new patients. Yes, yes, of course, dear. What do you feel is responsible for this latest outbreak? Well, all I can figure is the carrier must have gone into hiding during the height of the epidemic, like everybody else in Port Charles. And when things looked like they were under control, he or she came back out into the streets and started uh, contaminating everyone he came in contact with. Well, tell us what to do. We're here to help, no matter how long it takes. All we can do is try to save the patients we already have and hope that the plasma we have on hand will hold out until Atlanta can send us some more. But, Steve, no matter what we do in here, how, how will they stop it? There's only one way to win this battle. The authorities have to find that carrier. And we have to destroy his virus in his system before it destroys all of us. Attention, please. Before any of you leave, there's something I'd like to say. First of all, I want to thank you all very much for your incredible dedication. And thank you in advance for the new demands that will be made of you. We can only pray that this latest outbreak doesn't snowball into hundreds of new cases. We all know that our facilities, supplies, and individual energies have been stretched to their limits. I'm sorry to have to say this, but once again, we must restrict the use of plasma to those patients showing third and advanced secondary symptoms. All new cases will just have to wait their turn. May God be with all of you and Thank you again. Steve, uh, about that request of mine to transfer to cardiology, you could forget it. But Monica, you feel worn out. And... Uh, Steve, look, everybody is worn out. Most of all you. I'm staying. Thank you, Monica. I appreciate it. I'm sorry about your Steve sent you in here to get some rest. Yes, he did, but I just can't cut off everything the minute I walk in the door. I mean, there are more beds out in the hall and more people dying, and there is no end in sight. Yeah, but at least we have enough plasma now to treat these people, huh? Yeah, right now we do. What about the next batch of cases that come through the elevator? And the next? Rick, we are fighting a losing battle until we find the carrier. Steve gave you permission to leave this floor and go back to duty downstairs, and maybe that's the best idea. No, idea. look, I can't leave. Not when it's understaffed already. You know, I just left, uh, Chris Jurgens. You know, that kid is just working his way right through tech school. He's always got a smile for everybody he sees, always a good word for hey, everybody. Hey, we are doing everything we can to help him. Well, maybe everything isn't enough. Gee, it just goes round and round in my head. Why poor Charles? I mean, why? Out of all the places in the whole world, Monica, someone has... hey, hey, hey. Get hold of yourself. I can't, Rick, not when there are people dying out there and we're helpless to do anything. We all have that same feeling of helplessness and frustration. We can't let it get to us. Those people out there are relying on us to pull them through. Nobody else. Who's going to pull us through? I think I'll call Steve. No. No, I'm fine. I'm fine. Forget I said anything. Really, forget it. Just like that? Just like that. Look, you were right. This is no time to think about things like that here. There are patients out there that need me, and their welfare is my main concern. I, I wish I had your secret. What secret? Being able to turn off your feelings and your needs so quickly. Monica, I want you to get some rest. I want you to do it right now. Yeah, right now. All the way. Well, I'm going to stay right here until I know that you're sound asleep. Thank you. Hey, Hollis, Joey. Rick, have you been on the floor yet to hear the good news? Yeah, Monica, just fell asleep a couple minutes ago. Oh, well, ha have you heard the good news? Well, there's a rumor spreading through this hospital like a tornado that Mitch Williams has found the carrier. This what? Yes! Did I just hear? Oh, Monica, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to wake you up. Wait a minute, I wasn't dreaming. 
Did I hear you? You say that they found the carrier? I'm, I'm going back there. Well, I, I mean, it's not official yet, but this nurse who just came off of a break told me that Mr. Jarvis from the State Health Department just called Steve to tell him that Mitch Williams reported he has the carrier and he is sending him over here right now. Oh, this is wonderful news. Are they positive on that? Oh, well, um, you know, it, 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 depends, it depends after they examine him before they'll be absolutely certain, but... Steve and Dr. Lombard are down in the emergency now, waiting for the ambulance to arrive. Where did they find him, and why is Mitch Williams so strong on sure that he is the carrier? Oh, Rick, I, I, I don't know all the details. Who cares about all the details? I mean, it means that we have a chance to win this battle, and we can... The quarantine will be lifted, and we can go all back, we can go back to living again. I want to be out there when I bring him in. Oh, Rick, I'm just so relieved. I can tell you how happy I am. Well, I, I, yeah, you, you would want to be out there again. You with me? Uh, I'll, I'll be there in a little while. I just need to I'll take a few minutes. Catch my breath. Here. Uh-huh. Thank you. Now, I don't remember what happened. When I, I fell down, Just as they were before this whole thing started. I've spent months convincing Helen that any feeling I had for her was just over. But if you ask me that now. Monica, look, we, we have been trapped up in this floor for weeks. When we are tired, emotionally exhausted, we don't even know our own names, let alone what we're feeling and why. That's why I just pray that this really is the carry. I mean, then. And Steve can lift that quarantine and I can get out of this awful place and, and back with Alan again because, boy, I am not going to feel safe or secure until I'm with him again. Symptom is there. This man is definitely in the second stage of Lancer. Dr. Lombard, then what are the chances that he is the actual carry? One in ten million, maybe more. Oh, no. In fact, from what I've read of Lancer's fever, I'd say there's no chance at all. If he's been carrying the virus around the system all these weeks without showing symptoms, why would they appear now? Well, our carrier is still out there. He hasn't the slightest idea he's a potential killer. I'll get the plasma started immediately, orderly. I'll go tell Steve he's on the phone with Atlanta and they're waiting for confirmation. Uh, do Dr. Lombard, what is going to happen if the news is out that, that people think we have the carrier in here and, and that they're safe? Let's pray that hasn't happened, Dr. Adams. Because if it has, we could have an outbreak on our hands. None of us would survive. I'm sorry I couldn't get back here sooner, but Steve and Dan and I were on the phone with Atlanta and the local news media trying to counteract Mitch Williams' claim that he found the carrier. I wanted you to see this. Oh, yeah. The beginning to show already. Small hemorrhagic marks and, oh, yeah, extreme swelling of the neck and throat. I would say he's definitely moving into the third stage. You're quite right, Dr. Williams. Uh, let's go somewhere and we can talk. Does anybody know the name of that man yet? Uh, Mr. Williams has assured me that his men are trying to find out his identity. He also assured me he would not go before the people of uh, Port Charles again and uh, make any of his news announcements. Well, there's no way, without knowing who he is, we can examine any of the people he may come in contact with before they've already met here. Could be an awful lot, Rick. Considering he's in the third stage. Gail, I, I thought you were going to spend your break with Lee. Oh, hi. Well, you know, I was. And then one of the nurses told me that they'd taken Lee and several of the other patients up to the eighth floor. Is that true, Dr. Lombard? 
That's right, Dr. Anderson. You should be very happy about that. We did some very comprehensive tests on Mr. Baldwin and the others. We're positive the virus is completely out of their system. Oh, oh that is wonderful. That is just wonderful. Uh, you know, Anne, Anne Logan, of Audrey's niece, survived last year, and now she is immune for her life. Will that be true for Lee and the others? Oh, yes. The antibodies in their bloodstream will give them the same immunity. Now, we need the bed space here. We'll have to move the survivors from this floor up to the eighth floor as soon as it's safe to do so. More bed space? Has there been another outbreak? Not yet. But after Mitch Williams' uh, false alarm, well, I think we'd better be prepared. You know, there is just a limit to how far we can go on like this. I mean, with the pressure, with the fear, and well, I'm... Just take it easy. Look, we were all praying for the same thing. Now we'll just have to go on fighting and, and hope that they do find a real carrier. Okay, of course. Uh, I'm sorry. Don't be sorry, Doctor. No one in the city wanted that poor man out there to be the carrier more than I did. But he is just a victim who, through his own fear and ignorance, failed to report the initial symptoms. Let's just hope there are no more out there like him. Every man, woman, and child that has the symptoms and doesn't report it, temporary carrier. You're right. Mm -hmm. The person we're looking for is someone who was exposed to Lassa, maybe in Africa, but who suffered only a slight case and through some strange chemical balance in his system, failed to show the other symptoms. He's the carrier. And he's no idea what a deadly power he is walking around with. Oh, it would take a miracle to find him if he has no symptoms whatsoever. We'd well, better pray for that miracle, Doctor. Because until we find him and kill the virus in his system, he still has the ability to spread the virus and continue this epidemic. I'll be getting off in a second. Uh, honey, I'm, I'm on the go. Uh, Monica's here. She'd like to use the phone. Oh. I love you, and I'll talk to you very soon. Bye. How long have I been asleep? Just a couple hours, and you needed it. A couple of hours? Never should have dropped off like that. I, somebody should have awakened me. Well, the rest probably did you a world of good. Yes, but I have to get back up here. Okay, then. Let me help you. Yeah, then let me check your temperature first. No, no, Rick, I'm okay. I've been in here too long already. I should have been out there relieving one of the doctors an hour ago. Uh, you're the one who insisted that we make regular checks on each other. Yes, I know, I know. But I'll check it the next time I come in here. Oh. Hey. You all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Uh, just a little groggy after that sleep. Anybody know where Audrey is? Well, wherever she is, I'm sure she's worried about you. Any report on Mr. Olumbo? Uh, he's in the same condition he was well, just before you went to sleep. I'd better make him my first stop. It's kind of important. Back to normal. Sometimes I wonder if anything is going to be the same again. 